welcome to the Republica Unicornia podcast. I'm Kathleen, the head yarn wench of Republica Unicornia. I am an indie dyer and bag maker and all kinds of creative endeavor doer based in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Um, hi, welcome back. We didn't have a video last week. I say we like it's anyone besides me, but whatever. There was not a video last week. There was a little brief tutorial, um, but I am back. Uh, just a warning up front, a couple of warnings. One, um, I will probably swear like a sailor. Entirely possible. If you have delicate sensibilities, you're gonna wanna move on. Also, this is going to be a lot of uh, shilling my product. <laughs> it's an infomercial for my yarn. So I am gonna start off at the top and I'm gonna talk about some general crafty stuff. If you are not here for shop chatter and don't wanna watch me gently, nicely saying, please buy my shit, then, you know, keep going. There are other podcasts out there of people who do not try to make their living doing this. So we're gonna start off at the top. We're gonna just jump right in and we're gonna start off with some whips, a finished object. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about yarn bases. I have done a little bit of this on Instagram, but I am so ready to just go full long form on it. I hope it's not boring, but I put a lot of thought into the bases that I select for the business, and so I'm excited to talk about them. And then I will be doing a little preview of all of the, okay, some of the yarn that is coming to next week's shop update. Next week's shop update is Thursday, uh, February the 23rd at 7 p.m. EST. It is on my website and the link will be below. You can also sign up for a newsletter and I'll send out a couple reminder emails. I do not spam you. I am too lazy for that. Um, so that's going on. I did a full bag preview over on Instagram. Yesterday there is a reel that is just like ooh shiny version and then there is saved in my highlights on my profile is a list is a, are pictures of what's going in and sizing info and pricing info. I really, it's actually really important to me that y'all know what's going into the shop. Um, I have a harder time with yarn because there's just so much more of it. So we're gonna try this out. I have no idea if it's gonna be interesting or if any of y'all are gonna watch, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I have, I do not have a warm beverage. I do have a cold beverage. I'm hydrating out of a Nalgene. Single best water bottle. Ever. I mean this one particularly this is from the mustard beetle who is like one of my favorite artists I They do fabrics too and I have a bunch of their fabrics, but it's got birds and flowers and it's got a moth. Where's the moth? There's my moth. It's got a moth on it So anyway, I'm hydrating I'm Like a responsible adult. So <laughs> Y'all ready? Um, I'm gonna start off with a oh, I'm gonna start off with what I'm wearing um this is the Prairie Windows sweater by Edible Chrome. Um, Tommy is amazing. They are from Illinois. I grew up in Chicago and they're from Illinois and uh, they love Frank Lloyd Wright as much as I do and designed this sweater. It is actually was designed, I'm gonna show it to you. I love it, it's my favorite. I think it's probably, I would say it's probably my favorite thing I've ever knit. Um, I love Frank Lloyd Wright so much that I have a tattoo of the stained glass in the Roby House in Hyde Park in Chicago. And so the minute I saw this sweater, I absolutely needed it in my life. It is designed for a, I think it's designed for, it's designed for worsted weight. And I needed it so badly, but I can't really wear worsted weight sweaters in Atlanta, not often. And so I decided to do some high level math and swatching and gauge stuff and translated it to fingering weight and it worked so much better than I ever could have thought. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a Ravelry page. If there is, I will definitely link it in the show description below. I wrote all my notes down. It it did work so much better. It is, um, the yoke is a little deep, so the, the armpits are a little here, but we're not talking like, you know the kinds that start down here. Like I have full range of motion. It does not have short row shaping, um, but for some reason, because of the depth of the yoke, like it just works and it has, not only does it have like the perfect Frank Lloyd Wright vibes, because it's designed after a Frank Lloyd Wright window, it also has just like vintage ski lodge vibes, which I am extremely into. I don't tend to favor pullovers, but I love this one. It's every time I put it on, I'm just like, ah. Oh. The yarn is, the blue is Harrisville Shetland Loden Blue which is um, beautiful. And Harrisville Shetland is one of my favorite rustic yarns. 
It is spun in New Hampshire and it is, it feels like really, really ropey, scratchy, like it feels weird in the skein, but I think it's because it has a lot of spinning oil in it. And so when it blocks, it just kind of goes, it just blooms wonderfully. It is rustic for sure. It's not soft, but it's not scratchy. Like I can actually wear it next to skin and I don't feel it. So I'm not super sensitive for the record, but um, I do, I really, really love it. It's And this color is, I don't know if you can tell. Sorry, I'm burping. That's gross. Why did I say that? I'm sorry, why are you here again? So uh, it's a heathered, like a heathered, sort of really deep blue. I love it. It's one of my go-tos. And I think the cream is, I think it's a realm of phenol, PT2, phenol garn, whatever it is now. The Norwegian one. Um, so anyway, that's my sweater. And so the designer is Edible Chrome and uh, their name is Tommy and they're amazing. And they also do beautiful quilts and hi, Tommy. Not that you're watching, but hi, if you are. Um, I'll link to, I'll link to the pattern below because it's, it really is. It's just, <clears throat> I made noises when I saw it. I just like lost my mind. So that's what I'm wearing. So I, I actually finished this. I think I finished it like la wait. Yeah. Two years ago. I think so. So it's been, it's been worn a lot because it's a, you know, it is a rustic yarn, but it's fingering weight so I can wear it some in Atlanta and it's chilly today. Okay. Moving on. I finished, if you watched that, if you watched the tutorial last week, you will know that this is a thing. I finished my Ferndale cardigan. I freaking love this thing. Um, I will have a photo here of me wearing it. Thanks, Steven. Um, here it is. Oh, I just buttoned the buttons crooked. So professional. Okay, while I'm doing this, because we're gonna multitask, I am coming at you from the Republica Unicornia Dye Studio. So if the audio sounds like I am in a converted garage, it's because I'm in a converted garage. So I hope it's not horrible to understand. I actually really do like um, recording in here because the light is so lovely, we have a glass garage door and so we have lovely light and you can see a little bit of what's going on in the background, which is, you know, dye stuff. But my yarn lives inside and so if I'm gonna be talking about a lot of yarn, sometimes I like to stay inside, but I decided to come out here today. Okay, here is my, oh, holy shit, I just did it again. You know what, I'm not gonna bun this. Okay, <laughs> you can see what it looks like on me. It's easier to show you that way anyway. Um, so this is the Ferndale Cardigan by NCL Knits. It is a worsted weight. It has this beautiful, okay, maybe if we do it like this and I don't talk while I'm doing it. Oh. Okay. Um, it has this. I just would like to say that I am a consummate professional. Just out here killing it. Y'all, as I've said, damn it, Jim, I'm a yarn dyer. I'm not a YouTuber, so you get what you get. Okay, that's just one button. It has buttons all the way down. So it has this really beautiful cable pattern. It is, um, it's a V-neck. It's raglan shaping. It's, I don't know. I said this was, like, these two are probably tied for my favorite knits ever. It is just what I wanted. It is like the cables are beautiful. It was fun to work. It fits beautifully. It goes in my wardrobe really well. The yarn, and I'm gonna talk about the yarn in a second. The yarn is so soft. I mean, my standards of soft. If you're fussy, people ask me this, like, is this soft? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Cause I actually am not sensitive to wool in any way. Like I. I grew up in Chicago and so I used to just wear like giant itchy wool sweaters next to my skin and it just doesn't really bother me. But it, this yarn it is the Fiber Company Cumbria. It is a blend of merino, masham, and mohair. Um, and so it's not like real halo-y like mohair, but it gives it some texture. I will say I've worn this, I finished this a couple of weeks ago and I have worn it a good bit. I will say the yarn is pilling. So if you are, you can see, um, and I'm guessing, it's not knit at a loose gauge, so I don't know if that's like the mohair kind of just floofing up. This is the under the arm. I don't know if that's the mohair floofing up. I don't know if it's merino. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I don't know if it's merino. I don't know what's going on there, um, but it is definitely a little a little pilly. I don't have a gleaner, like I don't have any way to shave it because I don't care that much, but if you are looking to use this yarn and this kind of stuff bothers you, it just might be something to be aware of. 
I think it's totally worth it because it is so, oh gosh, it's like the perfect weight. Even though it's worsted weight, it doesn't feel heavy. Um, it's just, I just love it so much. This color is called Buttermere and it's like the perfect mustard because the perfect mustard always has some green in it. It's got a little bit green in it. Anyway, I love it. I love it. It. I, I could see me making another one of these just because it's such a, it just fits so beautifully with my style. It fits into my wardrobe and it's like the perfect throw on piece. Atlanta has a lot of temperature variations even when it's cold. And so I really, and I prefer cardigans anyway. So I really do need to wear cardigans. I mean, I need to make cardigans more. And so it's great. Okay, we're gonna do a little a little whip check-in. Um, I have, I was experiencing a little bit of elbow pains which happens when I like knit for weeks on end and don't do anything else. Um, it has resolved itself, which is great. I always take really good care of myself when it's like that. So I've been really glad to get back to some of my whips because I cast these on the beginning of January, I knit like a crazy person, and then it, I started hurting and so I couldn't knit as much and it wasn't fun and it was a whole, it's always kind of fraught. So I am back and so I'm taking my time, but I have made some really, I think some really good progress on my seaweed slipover. I, I'm so excited to wear this. It is exactly my colors. I realized it is the same colors as one of the colorways that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. It's just, I mean, it's lumpy right now because it needs to be blocked, but it's just, it's been really enjoyable. It's just, I just really love this. And I really, the vest as a, as a thing is just, I'm all in right now. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm not in a giant rush. I'm um, about to do, I think I have a little, I have like maybe, I think 20 more rows and then I start on the shaping and get to add the steaks and do all that kind of stuff. So it's going to look really goofy in a little bit if you've ever made a vest that has steaks. It's like, it looks like a, tri it's like a triangle with like, it's just, it, it looks nothing like a vest until you cut the steaks open. So it'll start, it looks like it's a tube now, but it's going to look really goofy before too long. So that's that. I love it. Uh, this is knit in a mixture of, I think I have a Ravelry project page in a mixture of all kinds of just fun rustic yarn. So I think there's some Harrisville Shetland in here, which is their fingering weight, and some Rauma, and some all kinds of stuff. This is the, and I believe the, the blue is the leftovers from the blue that I'm wearing. So things get used. So that is clicking along and I'm really enjoying it. I kind of have to be in a mental space to sit down and do stranded color work. It's not hard, it just, you have to pay attention. It's not like a zone out kind of thing. Um, I also, also, uh, mini shameless self-promotion the size bag will be going into thursday shop update there are 14 of these which doesn't sound like a ton but it's a ton i think the most i've ever had is about six uh so i made a lot of these because they're the the biggest size they're just the best i just love them okay not that i'm biased or anything let's see if i can actually show this okay uh this is the ribblesdale vest by why can I never remember this designer's name? It's Lily Kate something. God, I'm I'm a monster. So this is the Ribblesdale vest, and uh, it is starting. <laughs> it's like a hot mess right now. Part of it looks like a vest, frankly. I don't know if you can see it. So there's the. Or it's just a floopy mess. I promise that it's starting to look like a vest. I am having such a fun time with this. It's brioche. It is DK and I'm using a, it's called, it, the pattern is for worsted Aaron, and so I'm using DK held with Surrey Silk, which I will talk about momentarily. Um, and I love working with these yarns. Like it's just, it's so soft. It's so fluffy. It just feels so lovely. And it's brioche, so it's like super squishy on top of it. It's not going super, super fast. I actually find, I think because it's not as comfortable for me to knit with heavier weight yarns, maybe because I have like tiny little hands, I don't know what it is, but it's not quite as comfortable. And so I actually make slower progress on projects made in heftier yarns. So um, DK is okay, but by the time it gets into worsted, like it's a little bit of a struggle for me to knit. It's not a particularly tight gauge or anything. It just, I don't know, I think it's just not as, doesn't feel as natural to me as a as a uh, lighter weight yarn. So it's just, ta it's taking a hot second, which is totally fine, I'm not in a hurry. I have no idea how it's going to fit, none. It feels right now, it feels like, and I understand like some of this is just my body, like when I, 
when I sew clothes, I have to do a petite bodice adjustment because like there's just, there's like less room between here and my shoulders than on someone who is not my size. And so it could just be that, like it could be it just next, if I make another one, I just need to shorten it. It feels very long up here. So I don't know how it's gonna fit, but I'm having a really nice time with it. And the yarn is, if I do say so myself, delightful. Uh, the DK is a sadly now discontinued base uh, that is a Polworth silk, which I will never get over them discontinuing, and the Surrey silk floof um, in the colorway wine sap, which is, um, <laughs> I realized I was eating a blood orange, my favorite fruit by the way, I was eating a blood orange the other day and I was like, wait, I dyed this for the first time in the fall and I had apples on the brain, but it's actually exactly the color of the inside of a blood orange. Um, so it's kind of like a, it's got like red and burgundy and a little bit of orange. There's like little pops of lighter orange. Um, it doesn't, I talked about this last time, I think it doesn't sell well, but it's just so my perfect kind of like maroon. I mean, I would say it's maroon, but like a lighter one. Um, and it's just one of those colors that kind of yells at me. And so I will keep dyeing it because it's my business. So, um, I'm enjoying that. So that's kind of, I'm, I'm all about vests right now. I don't, I, we're nearing the point in, in the year um, where I live, where if I start a sweater now, I won't get to have it on my body until November. And it really does kind of slow down my garment knitting mojo a little bit until the summer where I'm like, oh, if I knit stuff now, I will have stuff in the fall. So it's kind of, I've been doing this long enough. It's just kind of a thing that happens. Um, so that is, uh, the uh, non-shameless self-promotion content. If you would like to nope out, thanks for stopping by. Have a great afternoon. Um, I hope you have great snacks and I hope you have fun crafting. Um, if you would like to hear me blather on about my business, then welcome. Okay, so when I started, oh, I just shook the table, oh, sorry. Uh, everything is set up on my die prep table and it is a it is a little wobbly so sorry about that when I started Republic Unicornia I came at it from the perspective of what do I want as a person who is passionate about knitting so I did not go in with any just like grand artistic <laughs> pretensions I still don't have any no artistic pretensions I wanted to I wanted to dye the yarn that I couldn't find that I wanted and for me, a lot of that was having control over the yarn bases. So I am going to briefly talk shit about Superwash Merino. Uh, this is literally nothing more than a personal preference, nothing more. If you love Superwash Merino, if you love buttery soft yarns, like go, you do you. Do you. I am, I'm so glad they're out there. I found that what I wanted in a yarn was different than what Superwash Merino offers. So Superwash Merino is really, really soft. And I actually am not primarily concerned with softness. I want my hand knit garments to be bulletproof as much as possible. <laughs> I want stuff to wear really well. That was kind of my, my primary goal. And it's why, I mean, honestly, it's why I choose the yarns that I do on my own knitting. It's why I'm wearing Rauma and Harrisville is I really want my hand knit garments to hold up really well, to wear beautifully, to not peloton. I mean, I do love my Ferndale cardigan, but to not peloton and just to just to like have that longevity. And there are so many great wools out there that are not merino. I think so many people when they first start knitting, that's what's available in hand dyed. And I I wanted I wanted, to, I wanted to play with all the yarn. That's it. I wanted to play with all the yarn. And I still, five years into this, am low, high key terrified that when I have a shop update, nothing is going to sell. And I'm going to be stuck with a ton of yarn that nobody but me wants. Is this reasonable? No. Is this my imposter syndrome? Absolutely. But I make business decisions based on that. So I figured if no one was gonna buy my hand dyed yarn, I was going to buy what I wanted because I was going to be knitting with it until the apocalypse. So that's basically how I make business decisions. I have had so much fun over the years adding bases to the lineup, finding new sources. Um, I, in the last couple of years, I've really been able to focus more on domestic wools, which I really like. and. I'm, I have to say it is one of my great joys as a person who does this 
when y'all are like, oh my gosh, I am so excited about knitting with this different wool I hadn't heard about. And I just, it makes me happy. And I like variety. And so the idea that I would dye the same yarn over and over again is also not really me. So um, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to talk about my yarn bases. I haven't had a chance to do this long form and I hope you are ready. So we're going to start off with uh, Old Faithful. I would say if I had a signature yarn base, this was it. So this is the BFL sock. Uh, this colorway is Wild Gravity. Oh no, it's a lie. This colorway is Chelsea Morning. Um, I'm going to talk about colorways in a little bit, so don't worry. I'm just going to be grabbing stuff because it's all out in front of me like a delicious yarn buffet. So this is the BFL sock. This is a 75% superwash blue-faced luster wool and 25% nylon. This is like stalwart. If I had, if I could only dye one base the rest of my life, it would be this. It is really hard wearing. I am wearing socks that I knit out of it uh, five years ago, at least, um, that are not, they have no holes in them. It just wears really, really well. It is, it is not as soft as Superwash Merino. It definitely is a little toothy, but it's not, it's not like, it's not this. It's not, it's a worsted spun Superwash wool and BFL is a soft fiber. Um, and so I, this is, I mean, this is my favorite. I love it. It's, it's what I buy the most of. It's what I dye the most of. It's what I sell the most of. So that's the BFL sock. Um, I also added in a, and it looks exactly the same, so I don't need to show you. I also offer what is called pure BFL, which is a hundred percent BFL, superwash BFL fingering weight yarn. Um, if you want to use it in shawls and things like that, it doesn't, it doesn't wear great in socks. I would recommend there's a lot of, there are a lot of opinions about this, but at least with the bases I stock, if you are going to knit socks that are going to get wear on the bottoms or at the heels, I would definitely recommend choosing a yarn with a nylon content. Is plastic great? No. But at the end of the day, I think we would all rather, myself included, that there was a teeny bit of plastic in those socks that you wore for years and years and years and years than them having a hole blown in them in three months and you being pissed that you paid $30 for a skein of my yarn. Like... So, uh, just a reminder that uh, individual choices are not a substitute for systemic change and the people in charge don't want to change. So here we are, making socks. Look at us. So that's the BFL sock and the pure BFL. Um, the yardage is a little more on the BFL sock and I have no idea why. They take dye so similarly, I have to have a whole system so I don't mix them up when I'm dyeing them and they're drying and things like that. So that's BFL sock. I also have a BFL DK, which is 100% blue face luster, superwash blue face luster wool. I love this base. This is one of my preferred for garments. Um, it's got, it's just great. This is also Chelsea morning. Um, it's just, I love it. It's a great DK weight. It's, again, the BFL is pretty durable just as a fiber, just because it's a little tooth, it's a little sheepier, a little sheepier, a little toothier. And I often reach for this in my own knitting. Um, my mill was out of it for most of 2020 and I was mildly traumatized by it. So I buy it in ridiculous quantities, but that's the BFL DK. Um, and um, I also very occasionally, cause it's expansive, I offer a BFL silk, which is, I have to even look at it because I don't know the fiber content off the top of my head. It's 55% superwash BFL wool and 45% silk. It is a fancy silk wool base. Um, it is, it definitely has some luster, so if you don't like silk shine, it's probably not gonna be your jam. It is very soft. I also bought for my own purposes, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stock it because it will have to cost a great many dollars because the undyed base was like bonkers expensive. It was a BFL silk cashmere, which is so fabulous, but I don't know that I'm going to stock it all the time, but this is the BFL silk. I don't dye this a ton, um, but it does show up from time to time. So we're going to talk about, oh, let's, while we're doing silk, we're going to talk about the floofs. I stock two floofy yarns. I, they're both lace weight. Um, this is the mohair silk. It is 72% oh, kid mohair and 20% mulberry silk. So this is like your, I mean, it's your, honestly, this, we all use the same bases. This is your like bog standard mohair silk. It is soft, it is lustrous, it is beautiful. It takes dye in these lovely watercolor ways. Uh, and I do like it. 
However, it is also photogenic. However, my favorite is the Surrey Silk Floof. So this is 74% uh, Baby Surrey Alpaca and 26% Silk, and I need readers. Um, I don't sell a ton of this because as, let me show you on a better, on a deeper color so you can see. It is not a pretty, it is not a photogenic yarn. It looks like a matted Muppet. Like this Muppet got bedrat, got left out in the rain and then like dried weirdly. It doesn't take dye as intensely as the mohair. So like, true story, these are the same color, right? So literally the exact same process, exact same dye ratios. I'm uptight as I'll get out. Like I can tell you it's the same dye and it doesn't take dye as intensely. And it just, it's just not sexy looking. However, if you like soft yarn, the Surrey Alpacas, it's, it is a cloud. Like it is so soft. And the fabric, I've only, I've made things with it and I've held it double uh, with, a, with another yarn. And the things that it makes, it's just, it's got, the alpaca's got a little bit of drape in it. So like everything is just drapey and soft and it, it you can wear it next to skin with no problem. Um, a lot of people have mohair sensitivities, uh, either allergy wise, nasal wise, because it, it makes people sneeze. Or, and even me who's not sensitive, it can prickle a little bit. So if you're sensitive to that, the Surrey does none of that. I also understand people have some alpaca allergies. There is out there in the world that I've spent a long time trying to find and cannot a floof yarn that is cashmere. And I want it. And I, if you have any, if you have the hookup, let me know because I would stock that in a second. But in the absence of that, the Surrey Silk is a, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. I know. It doesn't look good. I know. That's why I resisted it for so long. I actually, when I was deciding back like years ago when I was trying to decide I could only stock one floof, I did a test and I was like, well, it feels better, but no one's going to buy it because it looks like shit. So I am a marketing genius, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is the one that I'm reaching for, for what it's worth. That I... I do also love the mohair. Like I do, I like dyeing them both. Um, so that is, those are my, my floof yarns. I, for a while, like I did a poll and I thought I was gonna maybe only stock one, but I'm not because I like both for different things. I like dyeing both and everybody likes both. So we love choice here. Okay, we had a little too much shit on your iPhone moment. Because I'm using an iPhone. If anyone wants to buy me a camera and a microphone, it would be much appreciated. Okay, so that's that. Um, I'm going to talk about my domestic wool bases that I just I love. That's all. Okay, so this is, uh, and this is Wild Gravity. Uh, this is my Tarhi sock, which is uh, entirely domestic wool. So it's U.S. wool. It's milled in the U.S. I live in the U.S. Like, it's hanging out in, in America. Um, it is 90% superwash tarhi wool and 10% nylon. It is 115 grams. And let me tell you, she, she thick. Uh, I would say that this is actually, it's technically a fingering weight yarn, but I would say it knits up like a heavy, heavy fingering, <laughs> like a heavy fingering light sport. Like it's, it's thick. Um, and it's really puffy and it's actually very funny. I think there, there might be a lot of spinning oil in it when I get it from the mill and it looks kind of just like floopy and sad and in the dye pot it just goes poof, um, which I really like. It is, it is soft. It's not like baby, baby soft, but this is, if the BFL is a little prickly for you, this is actually a softer yarn. It is so squishy. Everyone on Reddit who hates the word squishy when we talk about yarn, so it's squishy. Not that I'm like on Reddit. I just look for some completely unknown reason. Anyway, so this is the uh, this is the Tarhi sock. I people who buy this end up being like massive fans of it. This is like cult following yarn. And I started stocking it because I did want to use more domestic wools. Um, and I actually ended up really loving it. It's not quite as lustrous as the BFL, like the actual fiber. Like it's a little more. Um, I would say it's like like a little more matte if you think about lipstick, um, but it is lovely. I will say one thing about it, just I don't know if it's the fiber itself, I don't know if it's the difference in the superwash process, I don't know what it is. 
It takes up dye really differently than the BFL bases. It sucks stuff up immediately, so it'll be a little darker in some spots and lighter in some spots. I've actually, I mean, I've been dyeing it for three years now. I have a hard time getting tonals really solid on it. I will try sometimes, but I tend to go with like the speckled and the variegated yarns on this base. Not always, but you'll see more of that. Um, so that's the Tarhi Sock, which I am a fan of. I'm obviously a fan of all of this because I chose it. I don't know why I keep saying that. Um, oh, oh, inappropriate noises. This is the, it, this is the Rambouillet Worsted. It took me years to find a worsted base that I liked. I did not want a merino worsted and there's not a lot out there. And uh, finally I broke down and ordered some and I have to say, this is like the worsted weight yarn of my dreams. It is 100% Rambouillet wool, and it's another domestic, so U.S. sheep, processed, dyed, ev obviously, everything. So um, it is the plumpest worsted weight. I don't know if you can see this. It is the plumpest worsted weight I have ever had the pleasure of working with. The stitch definition, it's got a really, okay, let's see if it can do this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It has the absolute roundest hand I've ever seen in any, in any yarn. It is like, I think it's a five ply, and it is just, the stitch definition is amazing. It is amazing in cables. It is anything like that. I made a, uh, the La Briome sweater by Nick Graffiti. A couple of years ago in it and it shines in brioche it's just like the just the texture of it I mean it is like it's thick and I it's not it's not rusticky at all it's pretty soft rambly I mean I would as I talked shit about merino right but I would say rambly as a fiber is like not super far away from merino but it just it's so plump gonna fondle yarn on the internet like a total creep I could do worse things um so this is the Rambouillet worsted and I am obsessed with it frankly like I'm obsessed with it I like dyeing it it does a little bit what the turkey does where it soaks up dye strangely but I have figured out some workarounds on that one so you'll start seeing it more in tonals and things like that so I love I love this one um, it was a long time coming and I'm glad it's here so that's kind of my standard bases. You will see me throw in some other stuff occasionally if I want to try something out. I very seldomly dye a Highland uh, Superwash, not, oops, sorry, a Highland non-Superwash fingering weight yarn. It is one of those, I'm telling y'all, everybody asks for it and nobody buys it. And I've been doing this for a long time and I'm finally like, whatever. So occasionally I'll dye that so you'll see a non-Superwash, just like, a, like an actually rustic hand dyed. Um, I think some of it is honestly, and I say this from personal experience as a knitter and as a person who purchases yarn, I want hand dyed yarn and commercial yarn for different things and to, to work differently. So when I'm knitting a garment with a commercial yarn, I want that consistency in dyeing. I want it to look the same no matter how many skeins I buy. I don't want to have to alternate skeins. I don't want to fuss with it. I don't want to do anything like that. And I think like I hand dyed yarn you work with differently right like even the tonals even as completely uptight as I am the tonals are going to be different um and you may have to I don't usually alternate skeins with the tonals but you might find you like to you might find there's a little bit of more variation than you like and so I just think that hand dyed rusticy yarns is just not my jam it's just like not where I am so that is that. So that's the yarn base information. Also, should you not want to listen to my diatribe, this is all on the website. So if you go to About Us, yarn base information, I give all of the information about the fiber content of all the bases that I stock, the yardage, all kinds of stuff. So I just, I really like sheep. <laughs> I really like sheep. I like all kinds of different wools. I like them for different things. I don't, I would never double down on like yarn snobbery for one thing or another. I use all kinds in my own work and I just think y'all might like to have the same options that I do. So that's why I do what I do. So are y'all ready? I don't know that I am. For 
shop pre shop update yarn preview. Whew! Okay, so I, I will say what I am going to show you right now is not everything. I don't know if you can see behind me. Um, there's some more behind me. I'll briefly mention that. I'm not going to show it all because it's still drying. Um, there is a lot of yarn going into this update. I think it's 300 skeins, and I, which is a lot for me. Um, I will be adding more. I basically, if you've been on the website, the yarn inventory is very low, and it takes me some time at the beginning of the year to restock everything. So if you don't see your favorite colorway, I promise it is coming in the future. I love dyeing yarn. I plan on keep dyeing yarn. I like to have a full inventory. It's not always possible. But so if you're if there's some colors you don't see, it, it it's not like you're never going to see them again. I don't do I don't do that thing. I don't do that. I don't do the oh my gosh, it's a limited edition and you'll never ever see it again. I make sure that all of my colorways are repeatable because I might want them. It's purely selfish. But I also don't want it to turn into like weird Beanie Baby circa 1997 grabby fest. Bags will, because I can only make so many bags, but the yarn is repeatable. So don't be sad. Please don't be sad. There's no, it's just yarn. There's no need to be sad. Okay, I'm going to start with the new colorways and I may accidentally shake the table, so sorry if you get motion sick. Um, I... This one I am ridiculously proud of. Um, this is a new colorway. A friend sent me a photo from the Juno mission that NASA sent to Jupiter of a storm on Jupiter and I was like oh I could dye that in yarn and then I dyed it in yarn. So I'm really excited about this one. This is I'm gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna show it on BFL sock because that's like when I dye that's kind of my standard. So this is coming on a lot of bases and I'll tell you all about it but this is Callisto. Oops. It's, it does not want to show up in photographs. It really does not. It does not. It just doesn't. Um, it will look like it's supposed to in the photos on the listing. Um, so this is, I'm going to take its little wrapper off. So this is Callisto. So it has like blues and silver gray and some, it has a little bit of brown. It has a little bit of pink. It's just chaos space yarn. And I really debated in adding this to the lineup. I like to keep a lot of control over my dyeing. I'm like that um, and this is one that you kind of just throw dye on yarn and hope for the best and so it's going to have a good bit of variation even in the same dye lot um, I will say having dyed it on almost all the bases that I offer like it's clearly the same colorway but if you are a very very particular person about that this may not be the colorway for you um, so it's going to be available it's so weird in the and on camera, like the purples, it does not show up. They're like purple gray that are not showing up. Um, so it's going to be available on uh, BFL Sock, on Mohair Silk, on Surrey Silk Floof, on Tarhi Sock, on Rambly Worsted. Oh, by the way, I refer to uh, Rambly Worsted as Rambo a lot. Uh, we also sing uh, Led Zeppelin's Ramble On about Rambole all the time. So you're welcome for that earworm. Um, and BFL Silk, so that's all going to be going in. Oh, one more thing, just a little behind the scenes. I dye in lots, dye lots of four, and generally I will dye for a shop update, whatever base, I will do a dye lot of four. I offer dye to order sweaters quantities, so if you need a sweaters quantity of yarn, you can order that on any colorway, on any base at any time. So the way that I think about shop updates is just like getting stuff in and so if people only need a couple skeins for a project but I am so happy to do dye to order sweaters quantities. So you don't have to like shop update hunt for if a sweaters quantity. Also four skeins of yarn is not everybody's sweaters quantity. So there. So just an FYI on that. So that's all on the website too. Okay so that's Callisto. That's going in. Uh, new-ish, I would say new. I dyed a little bit of this on BFL Sock before the holidays. Um, this is Chelsea Morning. And it was inspired by the rainbow prisms that show up in my studio. I have decals that are unicorns on my studio, on the garage door. And my floor is gray, and I wanted to dye, dye yarn that looked like my studio floor. So this is Chelsea Morning. It is named for the Joni Mitchell song. So it's, it's nice. I really like this. Um, 
it is a little bit like little five points l5p which is one of my existing colorways but l5p is like all speckles this is like smushed down so there's like it's a prism right so it's smushy there are some speckles but it is not as aggressively crispy speckled as l5p so that's uh chelsea morning and we have oh oh did i shake the table i think i'm gonna shake the table sorry uh it's great maybe i'll just show one this is Wild Gravity. I also dyed this at the end of last year, but just a little bit. And I think I did a little bit of Rambo earlier in the year. Uh, Wild Gravity is the same, basically the same idea as Chelsea Morning. It's just the uh, neon rainbow version. I'm here for it. It is named for uh, the Talking Head song um, because uh, I dye a fairly sim like similar-ish colorway called Pull Out the Roots, which is another song on the same album. And unfortunately, <laughs> my, dye, my dye supplier has been out of one of the colorways in Pull Up the Roots for two years. And I don't know if it's coming back. And I'm like using, like I'm rationing it. But it fulfills the same thing. So Pull Up the Roots is a like a smoky lavender gray. This is straight, straight up gray but it has these little flashes of neon. It's very fun. I really like this one. I don't know why I keep saying that. Of course I like it. I would not dye it if I thought it was hideous, generally. So Wild Gravity is going to be available on Rambo, BFL DK, BFL Sock, Tarhi Sock, and Mohair Silk. It's pretty fun on Mohair Silk. So that is Wild Gravity, so that's going in. And uh, this is another one that I dyed at the same time that I dyed the first round of Chelsea Morning because it's also named for a Joni Mitchell song. This is Constant as a Northern Star, which is a line in A Case of You. And if you haven't cried your way through that song, have you even lived? Um, Constant as a Northern Star, it's showing up really navy here. It's not. It's like a dark cobalt. It is so much dye it's four colors of dye to get this like really deep rich blue it's the same blue that is the album cover of Joni Mitchell's blue um so there's this one this goes this is like so in my wheelhouse just of really deep saturated jewel tones um and it it is not on purpose looks amazing with Chelsea Morning that was on purpose so that's going in um and then a couple more new colorways and then I'll get to the uh, old ones. This is only going in on BFL sock now. It is repeatable, I will add it. Speaking of things in my wheelhouse, it's pond scum! I love, I love a pond scum green. I just, I do, we bought a sofa that's this color, like it's so my jam. It's got green, it's got gold. If you are a returning RU person, it's, kind of like new range but new range is more speckled and has a lot more variation again another supply chain issue they've been out of one of the colors that i use in new range for almost two years um so this uses different dye it's more green it's more green less gold um this is i don't know if i just said this this is dirty old town which is named for a pogues song from the album rum sodomy and the lash i fucking love the pogues like i <sighs> Chances are, if you buy a skein of yarn from me, I will have listened to both The Pogues and Led Zeppelin while dyeing it. Um, so I just wanted like a grungy, scummy, glowy green. And this is like, this is my jam. So it's only going to be on BFL Sock, but it, it is repeatable. It will come back in the future for all you pond scum lovers. I know you're out there because we talk about it on Instagram all the time. Um, this is a now for something completely different. Sorry for any sensibilities. This is this is a new one. This will also only be available on BFL sock, but it is also repeatable. I ran out of time. It happens. I sewed a bunch of bags. It happens. Uh, this is called a cunning plan, which is uh, Baldrick's signature line from the show Black Adder. Which, hey nerds, I see you. So I have been trying to get this color. Probably since I started dying. Has anyone asked? No. This is not like, oh my gosh, you really need like a, a magenta, like a true magenta. I'm going to need a dark jewel tone magenta. No one has asked. 
but I wanted it. And it has taken so many tries. So I'm very pleased that it is here. It is, uh, if you are a Pantone nerd, this is Pantone's color of the year, basically, which I didn't realize until I finished it and then looked at Pantone's Instagram. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's it. So this is, um, so a cunning plan is, it's it's got some variation in it. It's like a, it's a true, I think the Pantone color is Viva Magenta. It's like a true magenta. It's not too pink. It's not too fuchsia. Like it's not too purple. It's just, you know what color it actually is? This is gonna date me. Do y'all remember, it was the extra gum. It was like one of their, they had like a, like a pink, a light pink bubble gum, but there was a dark pink bubble gum. It is the exact color of that wrapper. Does anyone remember that? I don't know. So that is a cunning plan. So there's a little bit of this going in, not a ton, but if you are very into it, there will be more. Um, this one I have not shut up about on Instagram, so sorry. <laughs> Speaking of things I've been trying to do forever. This is red velvet cake and you would not think that a good red would be hard to dye. In, oh, I just dropped my shoe on my table, sorry. You would not think that a good red would be hard to dye, but a good red is hard to dye. I have tried so many things. Everything turned out too pink, too purple, too orange. Um, there have been some happy accidents. Miss Scarlet was a happy accident, me trying to get this color, but like I have worked so, so many tries, so many fails. It seems like even just like using red dye just makes stuff really like brassy and bright. Um, and so I finally landed on it. Um, I think it's showing up maybe a tiny bit darker on camera, but it's kind of a chameleon. I am in pretty bright light. Um, in slightly lower light, it's less. That's actually pretty accurate. It has a lot of depth in it for just being a semi-solid red. Um, it is the exact color of red velvet cake, which I love. It is not armadillo shaped, sadly. Um, so I, I'm just obsessed with it. That's all. It's just a long time coming. It, uh, it's my, it's just, it's red. Look, it's red. I get it. It's red, but it's like the red. So it's going to be available on BFL Silk, BFL Sock, a lot of BFL Sock, because I did a couple of batches of it. So there's like, I think there's six or seven skeins on BFL Sock and Mohair Silk. So. If you are a red person, we have a true, finally, finally, a true red. This is another one that's four colors. Um, it, it, the layering is where it's at, um, and I'm very fussy. So that is new. So we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the, the returning ones. Um, this is a new-ish one. I think I've only dotted a couple of times. Um, I have a teal peacock blue, colorway called Electric Mrs. Peacock, which I love. It's it's bright though, and I wanted a true teal green. I am so bonkers. I wanted like a true teal green. And so uh, this is Mermaid Avenue, named for the uh, Billy Bragg, Wilco album that is was previously unpublished Woody Guthrie songs, which are is like one of my favorite albums of all time. And because it's like this mermaidy, I think it might, I think my new iPhone actually can handle greens and blues, which is very exciting to me. So here's Mermaid Avenue. So if you have Electric Ms. Peacock, this is like the greener, it like, it's like a deeper, more emerald version of it. They are not the same colorway. I was panicking because, you know, I panic. Um, this is a color I want to wear all of the time. This is like one of my favorite colors to wear. Um, and it, it has a lot of color shift in it. It looks blue in some lights. It looks green in some lights. Um, so it is going in the shop. Like I said, this is the same. I know it looks, it looks like I don't know what I'm doing. I, it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, but I do. And it's just science. Um, so it's going to be on Surrey Silk Floof, on Rambouillet Worsted, and on BFL DK. I th possibly BFL Sock? I don't, I don't remember. There may be some BFL Sock. Um, but uh, Garments Man. I think garments in this, I think a sweater in this would be amazing. And so you can see, yeah, I love this one. It's so funny how the colors that just, I lose my mind over people are like, mm-hmm, where's the neon? But Mermaid Avenue is going in. Um, it is my great pleasure to bring the Shire back. If you have been around a min minute, I did a Hot Hobbit fall update in August of last year. And this one just kind of flew. Um, so I 
I am very glad to bring it back. It's a little labor intensive, so I kind of have to be in the mood for it. So this is the Shire. <laughs> it is all the greens, gold. It's got some speckles, it's got some brown speckles. It's just hobbity goodness. Um, so that's going to be available on BFL Sock, BFL DK, Tarky Sock, and Rambo. Um, so I'm very, I'm really glad this one's back. I just, I'm kind of obsessed with it. And I think y'all were too, because it, uh, it moved. So that's coming back. Um, uh, another one that's coming back is, this is like the same colors as my seaweed slipover. <laughs> I, look, I was dying and I was like, oh, I, I have a type. So this is um, Ventura Highway. Mm -hmm. It's very speckledy. It's got a light brown, like a light brown base. And it's got all kinds of blue and green and teal and gold speckles. It's named for the America song because we love Yacht Rock. Because it's awesome. Yacht Rock is great. There, I said it. No one said it was cool. So there are the speckles. So Ventura Highway is going to be on BFL Sock and Rambleway Worsted. Did I do it on DK? I don't. It's been a long few days. I have no idea what's going on. Um, also, uh, I don't dye a ton of neutrals. But when I dye a neutral, it's one I really like. So um, this is pretty much a standard and always in stock. This is Toasted Marshmallow. <laughs> I sound not excited about it. I. It took me a long time. I love oatmeal colored yarn. I just, that's, I wear ivory a lot. Like I love, I love a good light brown. Um, and so Toasted Marshmallow is a tonal. It's got like different ships of brown in it, but it also has very fun speckles. Oh goodness, seriously. Okay, you can see. So it's got brown speckles. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a neutral, right? Like it's a true neutral, but it has a little bit of pizzazz to it, and it's a fun one. So it's going to be on BFL Sock, on Targi Sock, on Rambouillet Worsted, on BFL DK, and I think for the first time ever, which is wild because I've been dying it for a few years, it's going to be on Mohair Silk. I confess that I did this for selfish reasons. You Sold the Teague has a new, I think it's a new beret pattern out, and I, I just really want it in this like I, th I think it's held double I think you hold it with worse like I think it's with worsted and I just I I just think a beret made in these two held together would be delightful so you know it's coming to the shop so that's coming got that uh silver springs um this is a returning one I came up with these last about this time last year, actually, it was for this same update. So this is Silver Springs, named for the Fleetwood Mac song, because if you haven't cried through that one, are you living? Okay, I really like breakup songs. <laughs> That's what I'm learning. So Silver Springs is a tonal that is like just mm, oh, all of my favorite sort of celid, like saturated celadon. It's blue leaning, but it's definitely, it's a light blue green. So that's coming on uh, BFL DK, BFL Sock, and Pure BFL. So that will be available. And I don't know why I keep saying that will be available. Of course it will. I'm sh I'm an infomercial for my own business. Also, there will be some gin-soaked barroom queen named for a line in the Rolling Stones' Honky Tonk Women. Uh, my mom is like a very proper, like she's not allowed to watch this because she can't handle my swearing. My mother is a very proper, very Christian Southern lady. Uh, and Kay loves the Rolling Stones. <laughs> like, loves. Has since she was, I mean, she's that age, like, fine. But of all the bands, you would think that my mother would just really love the Rolling Stones or not on them. And uh, so, Gin Soaked Barroom Queen is named for a line in Honky Tonk Women, which, if I remember this story correctly, she had to sneak buying the 45 so my grandmother wouldn't find out because they were Baptist. Anyway, so Gin Soaked Barroom Queen is coming to the shop. It is a purple plum I would say it's like a true plum a purple plum tonal it has some depth to it some color shifts it's got multiple colors in it all of my tonals except for one which shall remain nameless have a bunch of different colors in them because I really like the depth of color that you get when you use more than one dye color so gin soaked barroom queen is going to be on uh this is 
on BFL DK and uh, Pure BFL. I think there's one more, but I can't remember what it was, and I got disorganized. So, Jinsook Barroom Queen. Um, a little bit of Moonlight Through the Pines is coming. For some reason, this, I don't know if there was a change in my, sometimes my supplier changes dye formulations. It's a little brighter than it normally is. Um, it's still like a really beautiful piney green. So Moonlight Through the Pines is going to be on Rambouillet Worsted and BFL Sock. And that's it. We love Moonlight. And uh, this one's coming back for the first time in a long time, which I'm excited about. This is... This is Grace Cathedral Hill, um, named for one of my favorite Decemberist songs. It's basically, y'all, I just like music, like a lot. I really like music. And so a lot of my colorways are named after songs that I like. So Grace Cathedral Hill is also inspired by one of my favorite pottery mugs. It is purples and blues and blue greens and it's got some speckles in it actually a uh, behind the scenes story it is the same base as toasted marshmallow so it has the same speckles if you can see them it has because a lot of pottery you know has, that spe has those speckles in it so it has the same speckles as toasted marshmallow it's also the same base like the same color base so it's a just it's like a dusty i love a dusty purple so it's a dusty purple blue so that is coming on a lot of things. So that's BFL sock, Tari sock, look at damn speckles, uh, Rambouillet worsted, and mohair silk. So this one moves pretty fast, I think. Um, if you if you are a dusty purple fan, um, and I am going to show y'all. Hopefully, it'll show up on camera. I panicked slightly when I saw Callisto when I was dying Grace Cathedral Hill, and I was like, oh shit, did I just dye the same colorway again? I did not. But they are close, and if you are into fades, are we still doing fades? I don't know, but if you are into fades, that might be a thing you could do. Uh, so second to last, actually, no, you know what? Eh, sorry. Second to last one. Uh, this is Queen Jane. And Queen Jane is a, another dusty purple, but it has some, like, pinky purples. It's sort of wisteria colored, if you know the flower wisteria. I wanted it to look like an amethyst. So this is, uh, so Queen Jane is, is going to be on Pure BFL, Pure BFL, on BFL DK, and on uh, Surrey Silk Floof. And you can see the difference, like, it's so crazy how differently bases take dye. It drives me crazy, frankly. Um, and one last, like, not super exciting, I did not save the best for last. Gosh, I'm good at this. I'm just real good at promoting my work. Um, I was feeling all the greens, and so this is uh, Mr. Green. I don't dye this one a lot. It's 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 green. I mean, it's like four different colors of green, but it it, it is a true sort of emerald green. It does what it says on the tin. <laughs> So there's four skeins of this on BFL sock coming. Um, I do. I I like it. I've used it myself. It is a it's not like it looks like anything else, but it's just not overly, you know, exciting. <laughs> so good at this. But if you love a good emerald green, it's a good emerald green. Um, also coming to the shop that is behind me is, uh, and I'm just going to list colorways. I'm not going, I'm not going to dig it all out and because it's still drying. However, if you would like to see any of what I mentioned. There's a colorway library saved on the website. I think it's under About Us. I will say, because I hate admin and I'm just one person and making stuff is more fun than talking, than doing admin work. I haven't updated it in a hot second, so it's not every colorway, but the ones I'm about to mention are going to, are in the colorway library because they're kind of stalwarts. So um, I have a little bit of Colonel Mustard going in. I have some Magical Mystery Tour, including on Surrey Silk Floof, and it's like a totally different color on the Surrey. It's crazy. So uh, Colonel Mustard, Magical Mystery Tour, Sea Hag, a little bit of White Russian. I think it's Surrey and Pure BFL for White Russian. And a whole bunch of Unicorn Birthday Party and a whole bunch of Unicorn Smoothie. Those are kind of my just... They're stalwarts, like I have to have them. So that's all going into, it is a lot of yarn. There are also bags. So there's also going to be, assuming I get my stuff together, which 
I think I will. There's going to be a section that I haven't updated in a while on the site, which is the grouchy unicorns, which are my seconds. I have a really hard time dealing with the listing, getting work out there that I don't feel like is perfect. And the seconds are obviously going to be in that category. And they're discounted. Like, I'm not going to charge you full price for my screw-ups. But it is a little... It's kind of emotionally hard for me to start listing all of that. So, but I think I'm going to because they're building up and it's a good way to get some discounted yarn. And I'm a perfectionist, so my version of not good enough to sell at full price is not necessarily something that you would notice, but I do note what's wrong with them. So, oh, I was going to show y'all and then we can wrap this up. I, it's a long infomercial. I was going to show you Grace Cathedral Hill and Callisto next to each other. Um, the difference is more pronounced in person. I always wonder sometimes if like this is just me being like, these are my babies. I can tell the difference. But Grace Cathedral Hill leans a little warmer brown and you can see it now. And Callisto leans a little more cool gray. Um, but I think in a fade, they would be kind of amazing. So uh, that is... That's what I have for y'all. Thank you so much if you're still here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And again, the shop update is Thursday, February. I keep wanting to say January. I have no idea time it is. Thursday, February the 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on my website. And all of that is below so you can find it. I'm hoping to get some buttons done. I'm not 100% uh, sure. I really need to have the studio cleared out before I start working with glitter. So hopefully there will be some buttons. Again, it's not like this is the last shop update I'm ever gonna have. I'm planning on one in probably the end of March that is going to be uh, spinning fiber, which is Rambouillet, spinning fiber and mini skein sets. Again, like I'm one person, so I can't do it all for everything. So. I'm hoping to have that, so if you don't see something you, and I usually sneak yarn in because I can't help it because I'm a monster. If you don't see something you like or if you're disappointed about there not being mini scan sets or whatever, like I promise it is coming in the future. And I appreciate you understanding that I'm one person. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and that it is cozy and comfy and you do things that make you happy. Take care, I'll see you next time, bye.